Um, my name is Ann Lowry Forster. <clears throat> I'm so glad to be here with y'all today. On a Monday afternoon in October of my sophomore year of college, I went to Walmart and I bought a pregnancy test. 30 minutes later, two little pink lines appeared and my life changed forever. I was everything that you would imagine I would be. I was shocked. I had been on the pill and adamant about taking it every morning before my 8 o'clock class. I was terrified. I was 19 years old, as many of you, I'm sure, are, and I was living in a dorm room. Of course, I was unsure. I went to my boyfriend and I told him he was everything you'd expect him to be. He was terrified. He was, had just celebrated his 20th birthday. He was shocked. He thought we had done what he thought would prevent this. And he was dismayed. He was also a sophomore in college and was, he was enjoying the luxuries of a lot of free time and not a lot of responsibility. But he hugged me and he told me we'd figure it out and he drove me to Taco Bell for a bean burrito. He, he, he knew the key to my heart. <laughs> um, two days later we went to the doctor. He did an ultrasound and confirmed that I was six weeks pregnant. We saw a little heart beating. Um, and that confirmed a choice for me that I had already come to in my head. Um, later that afternoon, we drove the two and a half hours to his parents' house. His parents were the accepting ones, the ones we thought would not be upset with us. Um, we thought they would be a little bit disappointed at the timing, but not angry at our irresponsible behavior. But that was not what we got. His parents immediately jumped to the conclusion that abortion was the only solution for our problem. To say I never considered abortion would not be honest. Of course I considered abortion. It's portrayed as the quick fix, the fix that involves the least time, the least money, and the least trouble. But that's not what I had chosen. I felt betrayed, alone, and angry. Especially angry that this boy who I loved, who I'd been in a relationship with for over a year, and who had professed to love me, that this boy, in response to his family's position, changed his. He looked at me and grabbed my hands and in a very serious, calm tone, said, I love you, but this is a bad idea. Make this go away or I will go away. His mother, a proud feminist, warned me that I would never succeed if I had a baby in college that we needed to terminate the pregnancy so that her son and I could move into life as unencumbered adults. A feeling of indignation rose up in me. Can't succeed, I thought, really? Have I not been raised to be and strive to be a strong woman? A capable woman? Does this right to choose for which I have argued so vehemently really mean that I don't have a choice? can't succeed, I thought, really? Let's find out. And so I did. I went to school full time until May, and Ada was born on June the 17th. I lived in the dorm, I was comically huge. My professors embraced my choice, excusing me as I ran out of the room with morning sickness, but never expecting anything less than my best. While I was pregnant, I competed on the mock trial team, which I had founded the year before in my school. After Ada Brooks was spent another two terms as that organization's president, I wrote a weekly opinion columns for the school papers, and my opinion on the abortion issue changed slightly. Ada sat in my lap as I read philosophy treatises, and we laughed a lot. I was not able to do this because I'm superwoman. I was not able to do this because being a single parent in college at any age is an easy thing to do. I was able to do this because I was offered unconditional love and support by my parents, my family, and my friends. I was also able to do this because of the financial resources provided to me by my academic scholarships and by my parents. These resources ensured that Ada and I never wanted for diapers or baby food or childcare. Patricia Heaton, Honorary Chair of Feminists for Life and Ray Romano's wife on Everybody Loves Raymond, says that any woman experiencing an unplanned pregnancy deserves to 
experience unplanned joy. I did not get to come to Washington for conferences as you do. I did not get to go hiking in Nepal or spend a semester in Vienna like I had planned. But I did graduate with honors on time with two majors. And I have the most wonderful little girl who rather than ruining my life and preventing me from succeeding, has just provided me with more challenges and ways in which to succeed. If we work to ensure that the thousands of young women who find themselves pregnant in college every year have the resources that Ada and I did, there can be unplanned joy. The unplanned joy of me watching my little girl walk down the aisle as the flower girl at my wedding, and the unplanned joy that Ada had this past year as she welcomed her little brother into the world, and the unplanned joy that my husband Paul had this past year as he adopted her. But there is much, much work to be done. My experience is unfortunately a very uncommon one. Thank you.